Say you're given a research essay to complete and you're a little rusty on how to proceed. This video is intended to kind of direct you to um, manage and how to start. So one of the things I like to do is open up a Google Doc immediately. And this is where I'll be able to have my notes. I can copy and paste links to the sources I have so that I don't accidentally lose them or or incorrectly write them if I put them on a piece of paper. And then I can actually just write my essay below my notes and then when I'm done writing my essay, I can just delete my notes and there's my finished product. So, I open it up, I go ahead and I title it Revolutionary Heroin Essay. I had um decided to write my essay or do my research on a female patriot or female influencer during the American Revolution. So once I have my Google Doc ready to go, I then need to go to Google and do some research. So I typed in lesser known heroes of the Revolutionary War. Now you could, just depending whatever your subject is, you just type it into the the search bar there and search and and hit you know find me this information there are so many well-known documented revolutionary war heroes that i wanted to go for somebody who hasn't necessarily gotten their deserved due or had the spotlight as much so in that research i find a bunch of different pages what I had done is I opened up the different pages, kind of scanned through, did anybody's story stand out as interesting enough that I would want to research on? Uh, the other thing is you might come across finding somebody, um, like I believe people in the past have chosen Martha Washington. Well, then she was really hard to write about because all she did was give George Washington grief during the whole war. So she wasn't really a hero and uh, kind of hard to write an essay on it. So feel free to always just pick somebody where there's plenty of information. Um, I had chosen the top 10 lesser known patriots of the American Revolution. When I clicked on that, it took me this page and as I read through the different people, I'd come across somebody named Polly Cooper. Now I'd never heard of Polly Cooper, so I was intrigued. And she was a Native American woman from the Oneida tribe of the Iroquois Confederacy. And during the terrible winter at Valley Forge, Cooper carried corn and taught the soldiers how to cook, uh, how to cook it so they would have something to eat. Her arrival with the life-saving supply of food was a welcome relief for Washington and his men. Now I'm familiar with Valley Forge and how bad this camp was like there were soldiers like who didn't even have shoes they were freezing to death they had no supplies and so this woman and people from the Oneida tribe came and helped them so that I found fascinating so since she's the person I first got my information this is the page I first got my information from I'm gonna go ahead copy this link and paste it and then do a brief summary of what I learned about. Okay, so Polly Cooper, um, an Oneida tribes woman brought Washington's army food during the harsh winter at Valley Forge. Okay, so when I write, ideally I should be writing these takeaways, these things in my own words so that I don't have to take a chance of plagiarizing and, and cutting it straight from somebody else's work. Okay, so then I decide, well, if Polly Cooper's my lady, I want to specifically search for her. Polly Cooper, Revolutionary War. Apparently, Polly Cooper is also on Riverdale, so uh, I have to make sure to add the Revolutionary War so I get the right person. Now, Polly Cooper on Wikipedia shows up, but we don't want to use Wikipedia. If you know nothing about somebody, you can just get some general background info at Wikipedia, but this is not an academic source. One of the things that you should be looking for as far as in the names of the websites that you used 
is something that maybe has org or um, edu. Edu is really good because it's an educational website. It's not trying to um, sell something or, or anything like that, um, but sometimes that's hard to find. So dot coms are okay, but what you need to do in your research is have more than one source. The importance of this is the more sources you have, the more those sources can confirm each other's information. One might include something the other doesn't, but as long as the facts that are given that are found in multiple sources are the same, you can pretty much get, you know, assume that the, all, all of the information is correct and that it's a legitimate, accurate website. So I'm going to... Here's actually something from the Oneida Nation itself. I'm interested in what they have to say about her. So I'll click, click there. Okay. So um, talking about help for freedom. Oh, so it's so it's according to the oral tradition. Polly Cooper walked hundreds of miles from Central New York to Valley Forge through the bitter cold on a relief mission and that they brought hundreds of bushels of white corn to feed General George Washington's starving troops. Oh my goodness. So she had to walk from New York. I'm going to need to look up where Valley Forge is. Um, so again, I get my website so that I can find it easily later on. Okay, so Cooper and other... Nida people walked hundreds of miles from New York to Valley Forge bringing so did it specify how many bushels they brought bringing hundreds okay bringing Hundreds of bushels of corn to feed Washington's army during the winter. Okay. Oh, I had one too many O's in Cooper. All right. Um, oh, so she taught the soldiers how to cook corn and stayed after even after the others had departed. Wow, okay, so she taught them how to cook the corn and stayed with the um, army even after her fellow when Nida had returned home. That's pretty impressive. Okay. Um, oh, wrong one. And she accepted a token appreciation, and it was a shawl, and it says it was a shawl and bonnet. Um, so when I had done my research, here it said Martha Washington, but in other websites it said other people, or that the soldiers, or that the wives of soldiers had bought it for her. And this is, again, one of the reasons we read different um, things. Okay, so this one says the same thing about Martha Washington, but I had done other research prior to making this video, and I know that other websites said it wasn't just Martha Washington. So I'm going to just say as a gift, okay, um, she was gifted with a shawl in thanks for her service um, to the soldiers, okay? Um, so I'm probably going to even find, you know, these were fairly short, so I might find another website. It doesn't hurt to have three, and then it just looks really good to have all of your different sources. So Polly Cooper, um, Oh, here's something about her shawl, Polly Cooper, History of American Women. All right, let's see what this says. Her, 
part an exceptional aid continental army during the bitterly cold winter generous and okay oh so here it talks about the misery the poorly equipped army they were weary um they were undernourished and it you know all this stuff the Oneida nation received word of Washington and his starving soldiers at Valley Forge and they had experienced the Oneida had had a really bountiful harvest and excess of corn and so this chief Skenandoa sent 40 warriors and one woman to accompany them and her name was Polly Cooper so here this actually goes into a really great set of information um, so, because here it says, according to legend, the army wives went to town to shop one day and took Polly with them. She admired the clothing, bought nothing for themselves, but she really liked this beautiful shawl. And so um, the women bought the shawl and presented it to her um, as thanks because she wouldn't take any compensation and actually this shawl has been handed down so that is a really cool information it's even displayed at the oneida indian nation to remind them about the importance and the impact of um, the indigenous americans so this is also a great website uh, and i'm going to include that and have my notes about it Okay, so now that I've done my research, you know, go back and, and type in your notes here. Then once you've done your research, you'll be able to go ahead and create MLA citations to go with this. Make sure that as you write your essay, your introduction should include the background of what led up to the individual being discussed. Um, and then talk about what their impact was. And the conclusion is your overall thoughts, you know, maybe saying, you know, who would have known what had ha what would have happened to the Continental Army, George Washington, his forces, if it weren't for the influence of the Oneida Nation and Polly Cooper specifically. So when you're when you put these facts in, so you have these notes and you put them into your essay, make sure when you put that information in, you're doing what's called an in-text citation. So I'll make another video that kind of explains how to do that.